Hey. So I just want to share with you some of the progress that I've had on my sweater. So I've finished the back of the sweater here and I'm currently working on the front of the sweater here. You know what back is in French? It's dos. So I finished le dos, j'ai fini le dos de mon chandail. And here I'm working on the front, which is le devant. This is le devant du chandail. So what I want to talk to you about today is some resources that you can use to learn languages for like French for example especially for learning new vocabulary so the first one is simply a dictionary but I recommend using a unilingual dictionary not a bilingual dictionary and this is for several reasons first of all you get a lot more vocabulary when you read it because when you're reading the definitions in French, for example, so you can up a, you're looking up a French word and you're reading the definitions in French, is that you will be confronted with a lot more vocabulary, which will help your learning. Another reason is that looking up the definitions, so actually what the word means, will actually help you better memorize the word than if you're looking up a translation. So let's say you're looking up the word in English. Well, in your head, your brain just makes a link to the English word. It makes a link to that word stronger, but doesn't necessarily make a link to the French word any stronger. So that's why it's always better, if it's possible, to look up the word's definition in the actual language. Or another good resource, too, is images. So if you look up Google Images, for example, of a word, then in your head, you're making a link to an image, which will help you memorize the word better. Another good resource is Wikipedia. Sometimes when you know the word in your first language, so let's say English, and you want to know what the word is in French, sometimes Google Translate doesn't always work or they'll give you tons of different definitions and you're not really sure which one is which. So using Wikipedia can help you because all you have to do is look up the Wikipedia page for the word in English and then go to the option to change languages and you will see the word that is used in French. So that's a really good resource because it shows you in a really easy way, the word that is used in the same context in French. So this is especially useful if a word can have a lot of different definitions, or it even could happen that maybe you're looking up a word and it's not even in the dictionary, or maybe it's an historical event or something like that. Wikipedia can help a lot with things like that. Another good thing about Wikipedia, especially if you're looking up things that are more related to the francophone world so let's say about films or about singers or different things like that well the wikipedia page in french will have usually a whole lot more information than the page in english so wikipedia can not only help you with your vocabulary but it can also help you in your research too, because you can find a whole lot of information sometimes in different languages. You can see this in action if you want, if you look up the Wikipedia page for the Quebec actress whose name is Guylaine Tremblay. The Wikipedia page in English has a little short paragraph about her acting career, but there's not much information and it's not even updated. With the Wikipedia page in French, on the other hand, you have tons of more information about the different prizes each one and everything, and you have a lot more updated information too. Another good resource 
is a website called Lingue. So it's a good website if you need to translate something, but it's a lot more in depth than Google Translate in that it actually gives you the context for the different translations. So how it works is that you look up the word or you can even write a sentence or a short sentence or maybe a couple words together. So you can look that up and it will give you a translation for the word or maybe even a couple of translations. But what's great is that it also gives you the word in context from official sources on the internet. So you can actually see how official documents have translated the word or group of words together on the internet. So for example, you can have things from the Canadian government or things from the European Union or other documents like that, where you can actually see the translation. When you look up the word, you just scroll down and then you'll see how the word has been translated in different documents. So then you can read, for example, if you're translating from English to French or French to English, you can read the paragraph or the group of sentences that come before the word and after it in French or in English, and then hop over to the other side and see how it was used in the other language. So like that, you will actually see if the translation that you need works for the context that you need. So if you see that in an official document, they're using the word almost exactly like how you want to use the word, well then that's a pretty good sign that it's a good translation. There's another website that has a similar functionality, which is Reverso. And Reverso also has a lot of just normal translations too for words. And again, you also have Google Translate. And which, which is good about Google Translate is you can type in a whole sentence or paragraph. But again, you have to be really careful. And most of the time, you don't really know if it is a good translation unless somebody that speaks the language takes a look at it and confirms that all the words are used correctly or that there's nothing weird about it. So I don't, wouldn't usually recommend Google Translate, maybe just for a word or two, or unless you're really able to check maybe with another source just to make sure that it is the good translation. It's always better if possible, if, especially if you're writing a couple sentences or paragraphs or even more, is to actually write it in the language, even if you know that there will be errors and all, and then if ever you come to a word that you're not too sure about, then to actually look it up in a dictionary. And if you're ever looking for dictionaries that are completely in French, there are quite a few online. There's one, there's a website that's just called Le Dictionnaire, and that is a good website with a lot of definitions. So again, definitions in French when looking up words in French. And another one is the dictionary La Rousse. So that one, there is a version online too, which can help you look up some definitions. And I know it can be hard, it can be difficult to look up definitions in French, especially if you're more of a beginner, but it can really help you improve your learning and get past just the beginning stages of learning a language. And it also will help you memorize a whole lot more words. And don't get too frustrated if you're reading the definition and you're not exactly sure what it is even after you're finished reading the definition. Because what you want to avoid is to get into the habit of always wanting to know the direct translation of the word. Because first of all, sometimes it doesn't even exist. There is no real direct translation. So you'll just get frustrated anyways. But again, also is that it doesn't really help you memorize the word either. So if you're reading the definition in French, let's say, and you have maybe a bit of an idea of what it is, and 
or maybe you at least have an image or you can look up a Google Images too, but you're maybe not 100% sure, but maybe about 80% sure that you kind of know what it is or have at least an idea, well, that's good enough. Then you can continue. And when you see the word later on in different contexts, then that will help you get more of a certitude of what the word is exactly. So you can do this with any words, but like I said, it's really great, especially for words that don't really have a direct translation or what happens sometimes too is that maybe the word is not really used that often in English, but it is used a lot more often in French. Then that helps you get a little bit more used to that too of different words uh, that are used in different frequencies in French. So again, those are a couple resources that can help you learn French or even any other language. So again, a dictionary, but again, if possible, try to use a unilingual dictionary, Wikipedia, Lingui, and Reversal. But again, there are other resources like Google Translate and other things too. So there you go. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, un pouce en l'air, subscribe, abonne-toi, and if you have any other resources to help learn languages that you know of, put a comment down below to help others learn French too. See you next time.